Whenever I mark something out, I tend to uh, grab the, my combination square first because I really like having a pencil mark on the wood as opposed to a scribed line. Uh, I do have an old uh, marking gauge that uh, used to be my grandfather's, and it does have the uh, marking point on it and is pretty easily adjustable, and it does have markings on it. However, I don't know how accurate they are. So today, I'm going to make a combination of a very accurate marking gauge with an old style flare. I began by cutting the walnut stock into two pieces, one for the beam and one for the head. I cut the headstock into three pieces so that the center piece measured three quarters of an inch. I used the center piece to set the rip fence. And I then ripped the beam piece into that approximately three quarters by three quarter inch stock. After finding the center, I then cut that piece into two. I used my plane and a jig to square up the ends and then finish sanding those so they're nice and square. After I test fitted all the pieces together, I then marked them all so that I would be able to reassemble them in the proper order. Like this old marking gauge that had a thumb screw on the top of it to adjust and clamp down the head of the gauge, uh, we're going to need to do the same thing in the head of our gauge. So I went to the hardware store and I purchased a uh, lamp turn knob and a wood insert. The wood insert has wood threads on the outside and then it has the 832 threads for the machine bolt on the inside. So the first thing to do is to drill a hole in here uh, at 1364 for the wood insert. I first drilled a 1 16th inch pilot hole. That way, I could find the center of the hole on the back side in order to drill a 3 8 inch countersink. This will accept the clamping disc. I then drilled the 13 64th inch hole for the threaded insert. I took a piece of 3 8 inch aluminum rod and cut off about a quarter of an inch of this in order to make the clamping disc. In screwing in the insert, I left it a little bit proud and then filed it off to trim it up. With the clamping disc, and the screw inserted, I was able to measure and see how much to cut off the screw. And then I trimmed it up. It was then time for a glue up with a little bit of carpenter's glue and some spring clamps.
Before I added the second side, I used the center beam as a spacer to make sure I got them the right distance apart. I'd set up my router with a half inch bit in order to cut a small groove the thickness of the ruler. Uh, it worked out really nice because the ruler end was rounded and fit in there just really nice. I then measured it in order to cut the beam 8 inches long. After a little tune-up, I marked out the shape of the head. I had drilled two eighth inch holes in the top of the head to accept some brass rods. This certainly will add some strength, but more importantly is the aesthetics. After cutting it out on the bandsaw, I then finished cleaning it up on the disc sander. While well, doing the final sanding, I made sure that the beam would slide through the head freely. I don't know that I'm completely happy with the proportions of the thickness of that the head there. It feels like it should be a little thinner, perhaps. Well, something to ponder a little bit. After some thought, I used a quarter inch roundover bit to give it a thinner appearance. Yeah, I think that helped to soften it just a little bit. After roughing out the shape of the brass plate, it was then time to prepare the metal pieces for the epoxy glue. These small half-inch flux brushes work really good for applying small amounts of epoxy. And at only a couple of cents a piece, you can just toss them when you're done. Now we'll let those cure for about 24 hours. After cleaning up the edges with the mill file, I then drilled some eighth inch holes in the center so that I was able to locate where to cut with my Dremel tool and cut the center out. After cleaning that up with my melt file, it was then time for a test fit. I drilled a couple of countersunk holes in the brass to accept some number four flathead brass screws. I left them a little bit proud that I then sanded flat. Putting a finish on the Walton is always exciting to watch that rich color pop out. I like using Danish oil for the finish, especially where there are moving parts 
as it penetrates the wood instead of laying on the surface like a varnish would do. I used the end of an old hacksaw blade that I put a countersink in and attached that to the end of a beam for a scribing point. Well, we'll do a little test scribe. I think that's successful. Now before I mark with a pencil, I get a good sharp one, and then I run it on my block plane a few times. and get a nice flat spot on it. That flat spot then allows me to hold it flat against the gauge. So that's my version of a classic marking gauge, uh, updated a bit. Uh, if you uh, liked this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, uh, sub I invite you to subscribe. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, at Art of Boat Building. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about uh, this, uh, the gauge and whether you're a pencil marker or a scriber. Uh, leave, me a, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.